good evening everyone firstly i would like to thank merck for the continuous support for our educational activities uh, and as the theme of this webinar is about patient journey through and beyond the pandemic i was asked to talk about patient uh, preparation uh, the pandemic is really something completely new to everybody in the world uh, there are a lot of unknowns a lot of questions uh, about it and the world is not ready for this pandemic uh, what i believe is important during the pandemic is three basic rules that i believe should be followed the first one the first and the most important one uh, is uh, take it seriously uh, the second don't wait until the facts are available in our hands to act because during the pandemic things move very very quickly good now is better than perfect later and uh, this is why I, why we need to use common sense historical evidence rather than evidence-based medicine in the treatment and in the battle against this pandemic of course we like to have evidence-based medicine ultimately but we don't need to wait till we have uh, the evidence to act covid 19 is an upper and lower respiratory illness caused by a novel strain uh, of coronavirus on march 11 the who announced the uh, current covid 19 outbreak as a pandemic effective and specific countermeasures for example antiviral are not yet available and uh, a vaccine not expected before 12 to 18 months it rapidly spread and affected almost every continent in the world uh, the problem is that transmission uh, of infection from pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic people can occur and is of great concern. It's mainly a respiratory droplet from coughing, sneezing, and infected surfaces. According to Wang et al. study, demonstrated that we can find the viral RNA in 29% in stool of patients and 1% in blood and none ha had viral RNA in urine and we don't have any data about follicular fluid. Can COVID-19 be sexually transmitted? To date, it has not been reported to be sexually transmitted, but uh, since sexual intercourse involves close contact, kissing and touching, these are the ways of transmitting this virus uh, here there are three uh, different types the spread of COVID-19 uh, across the world till now is about uh, 4 uh, million uh, confirmed cases uh, and uh, more than 250,000 deaths and what about the situation in Syria? The spread of COVID-19 in Syria uh, till now uh, is only uh, 45 confirmed cases, three deaths and uh, 27 uh, from uh, them is rec are recovered. Uh, what about COVID-19 and infertility? Of course, data is not available, but we all know that ACE2 receptors, which is the receptors needed by the virus to invade the cell, are present in the testis, in the ovary, and in the endometrium. But uh, we, all, we also know from pandemics that these organs were never infected. Uh, that means did not find uh, any viral RNA in these uh, tissues. Uh, 
so it's believed that COVID-19 will have no effect uh, in, on male and female reproductive system and fertility. Uh, so far, no study has uh, confirmed that the coronavirus can damage male testicles and adversely hurt male fertility. As far as testis is rich in ACE2, uh, we suggested men who get the virus uh, might consider getting tests, uh, tests on the uh, test on their uh, semen quality after three uh, months. That means uh, we should uh, do semen analysis after three months. Is there any uh, risk of viral contamination to gametes and embryos in the IVF lab? It's likely to be minimal because of sperm, oocyte, and embryos don't have S2 uh, receptors for COVID-19 and are unlikely to be infected. The zona pellucida represent a high level of protection for oocyte and embryos. And uh, finally, the repeated washing steps will result in a high dilution uh, of any possible con contamination or contaminant. Uh, these are international uh, societies recommendations such as ASRM guideline that was previously mentioned. Uh, and this is ISHRI uh, guideline. In Syria, there was a joint statement or consensus that included uh, suspend fertility treatments except urgent fertility preservation in oncology patients. In case started, freeze all. Uh, centers can see patients who are currently in treatment for any essential appointments such as monitoring ultrasound scans or checks or uh, early pregnancy monitoring. A recommendation uh, that hospitals suspend elective surgeries during COVID-19 crisis pandemic. And this is the summary of Syrian uh, consensus. Why uh, the Syrian uh, consensus? To avoid complication of ART and pregnancy, to avoid potential COVID-19 related complication during pregnancy, to decrease the unknown risk of vertical uh, transmission in COVID-19 positive patients, to support the, ne the necessary reallocation of healthcare resources, to observe the current recommendations of social distancing, and finally to minimize any risk of transmission by traveling to a clinic. Uh, what to do during this time? Use this time to prepare your body for uh, the forthcoming treatment and pregnancy, uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, by daily routine of exercise, online fitness classes, continue your vitamins, vitamins, uh, especially folic acid and vitamin D. Uh, many women are rushing to get their eggs frozen among fears of the coronavirus. A top fertility clinic says it's been streams with uh, women begin beginning to, uh, to freeze their eggs during the pandemic. It's likely that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic will be with us for some time, uh, at least until an effective vaccine is available and it's not logic to keep our IVF centers closed. So it's time to consider strategies and best practices for resuming time-sensitive fertility treatment in the face of COVID-19 in the population. Uh, infertility is a disease and once pandemic is stabilized, all ART treatment can be restarted for any clinical indication. 
in line with uh, some regulation. So uh, vigilance and measured steps must be taken for a resuming and safe practice. However, what are the best new recommendations for the safety of both patients and staff? Uh, six pillars of good medical practice proposed for the restart of activity in the ART clinic and laboratory. According to ISHRI and other societies, guidelines are uh, discussion, uh, agreement, and consent to the start of a treatment, staff and patient triage, access to advice, and the treatment, adaptation of ART services, treatment cycle planning, and finally, code of conduct for staff and uh, patients. Firstly, discussion, agreement, and consent to start treatment. Uh, High-risk patients, such as diabetes, uh, hypertension using immunosuppressant therapy, uh, past transplant patients, lung, liver, or renal diseases uh, should not start ART treatment until it's deemed safe to do. All patients uh, should be offered a choice to proceed with or postpone their ART treatment. In both cases, uh, patient preference should be clearly documented. Uh, patient must be uh, comprehensively informed, clearly understand uh, the risk related to COVID-19 disease, uh, the increased risks uh, in case of infection during uh, pregnancy, how to reduce uh, the risk of infection in general. Uh, the patient triage included the questions about uh, sickness in the last two weeks, uh, fever, uh, sore throat, uh, loss of smell or uh, taste, uh, contact with somebody who has any of these symptoms, uh, and uh, travel to an area at high risk for COVID-19. Working in a hospital. Uh, contact with somebody having COVID-19, living with anybody having COVID-19 symptoms, uh, certified medical evidence of clearance after recovery from COVID-19, and about severe medical conditions uh, like diabetes. Now, uh, what about procedure for staff after uh, doing a triage regarding health status? Uh, staff suspected should undergo COVID-19 IgM IgG testing or equivalent tests. All uh, test positive, uh, uh, respective of symptoms, should receive health advice and go into self-quarantine. Uh, Staff who are symptomatic should be referred to medical advice and testing and should not re-attend work until the infection is cleared uh, and uh, documented by negative real-time PCR tests. Contact tracing and testing should be a routine if a staff member is diagnosed with COVID-19 infection. Uh, depending on the size of the unit, staff should be subdivided in mini team with uh, minimum interactions uh, among them. Uh, this is the summary figure of staff triage, uh, explaining that the uh, triage questionnaire should be done two weeks prior uh, to start uh, the clinic activities. And if they uh, are asymptomatic uh, start the work. If uh, there are specific symptoms or uh, previous COVID-19 positive tests, go to uh, health advice and self-quarantine. 
and if there are mild or non-specific symptoms, uh, triage uh, potentially potentially positive, go to testing uh, for uh, COVID-19 on the IgG uh, and IgM, and after that, if a negative, uh, start the work. If positive, go to health advice and self quarantine. Uh, now, what about uh, the procedure for uh, patients? All patients and partners planning to start treatment should have a triage questionnaire by, by paper, email or phone two weeks before starting treatment. A further triage of both partners should be uh, performed during uh, ovarian stimulation. And uh, if patients uh, have uh, been on respiratory uh, support during the COVID-19 infection episode, they should additionally provide evidence of assessment and medical specialist report. Now, who are the patients classified as uh, low risk? Patients with negative clinical history, lifestyle compatible with minimal risk of contact with potentially infected individual. Uh, both patients are asymptomatic. These patients should be included directly. This is the first the first scenario. Uh, the second scenario, we should be open-minded to include or not. Uh, the patients who have recovered from a previous COVID-19 infection, proven by certified medical uh, evidence of clearance, should have COVID-19 IgM IgG testing prior to starting a treatment. In addition, presence of non-specific symptoms in one of the partners before starting ovarian stimulation. Uh, here, repeat the triage at the beginning of ovarian stimulation. If negative, uh, continue uh, the treatment. If sym uh, symptoms persist, perform COVID-19 IgM IgG testing to decide. If negative, continue the treatment. If positive, postpone the treatment and refer for further uh, testing. Uh, in addition, non-specific symptoms arising during ovarian stimulation. Here, perform COVID-19 IgM IgG testing. If uh, negative, continue the uh, treatment. If positive, postpone the treatment and refer for further testing. Now, the third scenario in which we should exclude the patients from ART treatment is if patients uh, or partners are symptomatic or COVID-19 uh, positive. Uh, postpone the treatment and refer for further testing and follow up. This is the uh, summary figure of patient triage, uh, explaining that the triage questionnaire should be done uh, two weeks before uh, starting the treatment. Uh, and if the patients are asymptomatic or partner, of course, uh, go to scenario one uh, and include the patients. If uh, there are specific symptoms uh, and or a previous COVID-19 positive test, go directly to scenario three and exclude the patients. And if, the, if the, uh, there are mild or non-specific uh, symptoms, go, go to testing for uh, COVID-19 IgM, IgG antibodies and if uh, uh, it is positive, go to, go to scenario 3 and exclude the patient. If negative, go to scenario 2. Patients 
education on COVID-19 risk and prevention is an essential step prior to acceptance for, acceptance for treatment. A patient education should include tutorial on the use of personal protective equipment if required, advice on uh, continuation of social distancing and uh, avoidance of unnecessary human physical contact. Information about symptoms of COVID-19 infection and finally agreement that uh, treatment can be discontinued if the patient encountered a high risk situation. What about the adaptation? The treatment of each patient should be completely rethought and individualized. Uh, in order to reduce unnecessary visits uh, and staff patient contact, telemedicine should be used for treatment steps that don't require the physical presence of patients at uh, the center. Uh, what about sanitation? Routine sanitation of all areas should be performed according to local protocols. Uh, and specific COVID-19 sanitation procedures should be uh, implemented in case of COVID-19 positive uh, patients or staff members. Adaptation of staff and center should uh, include uh, COVID-19 specific training, COVID-19 specific standard operating procedures, adjusted work shifts, and emergency agreement between ART uh, center to guarantee continuity of treatment uh, provision. Now, uh, access procedures should include uh, limitation of the number of persons present in the center, provision of protective screens for administrative staff, provision of personal protective equipment and sanitation device, and restriction of access, access for partners and accompa uh, accompanying persons. Uh, and redesign of waiting rooms of, uh, and working spaces to guarantee appropriate distancing. Uh, management of ap uh, appointment according to a specific timetable. Uh, subdivision of staff into many teams to uh, reduce unnecessary exposure of patients. And finally, uh, follow up uh, patients three weeks after outside retrieval and or embryo transfer. Now, what about the procedure during ovarian stimulation monitoring? During this phase, of the following specific precautions should be taken. Uh, minimal exposure for both staff and patients. Isolation of staff showing symptoms of infection. Use of personal protective equipment by staff uh, and finally, minimal number of visits uh, and optimized number of blood tests. And now, during OSI retrieval, follow standard procedure unless changes occur between ovulation trigger and OSI retrieval. If pos positive rate triage, consider COVID-19 IgM IgG testing and or real-time PCR testing for COVID-19. Uh, based on the result, decide whether to continue the treatment or to postpone uh, it. And if the patient tests positive for COVID-19 before ovulation trigger or embryo thawing, postpone treatment, refer and uh, uh, isolate. And finally, uh, exceptions, uh, that when patients at high risk uh, for uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, in this case, oocyte retrieval could be performed and unit sanitation should follow. 
Now, what about the procedure in the IVF lab? Uh, firstly, routine uh, good laboratory practice should be followed and laboratory staff should wear masks and gloves. Secondly, uh, staff uh, should be organized in many teams. Thirdly, uh, extra care should be taken to reduce exposure to native follicular uh, fluid and sperm by dilution and safe disposal of fluid as quickly as possible. And finally, uh, should a patient become uh, suspect uh, or positive for COVID-19 during embryo culture, a freeze all policy should be adopted. And during embryo transfer, you have to limit the number of staff members in the transfer room, restrict access for accompanying persons, uh, and perform transfer only in cases of low risk asymptomatic patients and partners. And finally, apply a freeze all policy for all patients or partners who became, uh, became symptomatic after the uh, oocyte retrieval. Here, this is the summary figure uh, of treatment cycle in general. Some consideration could include, uh, firstly, the impact of delay on patient prognosis due to medical factors such as age, ovarian reserve, or endometriosis. Secondly, number of patient visits required. Thirdly, the impact of treatment delay on the mental or and emotional well-being of patients. And finally, the impact of delay on patient ability to access treatment due to insurance coverage or employment status. Now, finally, ladies and gentlemen, together we can save this world by following precautionary measures and taking care of each others. Thank you so much for your attention.